Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 1-3, Variables and Expressions. Today we will look at translating verbal phrases into algebraic expressions. So a sentence in words and we're going to write it into numbers. And we're going to evaluate expressions containing variables. So we're actually going to solve for um, equations that contain a letter or a variable. Please make note of this key concept, algebraic expressions and verbal phrases. Here's our definition. Algebra is a branch of mathematics that uses symbols. A variable is often used in algebra. A variable is a letter or a symbol used to represent an unknown value. Any letter can be used as a variable. So for example, um, we have this here, the letter X is often used as a variable. You can have four apples and your friend took away some apples. We don't know what those some apples are. We don't know what they are. So we just say, we know that from your four, some were taken away. We don't know how many. Maybe this X could be one, two, three, four. It could be either one. Okay. Here we have, so we just simply write next. Here we have 5m means 5 times m. So when you have a number and the letter next to it with no symbol in between, they multiply. So we have 5m's. Okay? This is called the coefficient, while well, this is called the variable. The number is called the coefficient. So we have our coefficient variable, and it means 5n plus 6. Okay? And then look at AB means A times B. So if we write A and B together next to each other, it just means they're being multiplied. Once we know the value, A could mean, this is just, I'm just making it up. A could be 2 and B could be 3. So I would have, when I replace my variable, 2 times 3. So the value of this would be 6. But again, that's all just made up because we don't know what those variables are yet. You could also have it in division where you have Y divided by 3 means, or y over 3 means y divided by 3. An expression like 5m plus 6 is an algebraic expression because it contains at least one variable and at least one mathematical operation. So one variable with one mathematical operation, at least one. Here's multiplication, and then we add. The first step in translating verbal phrases into algebraic expression is to choose a variable, any letter, and a quantity for the variable to represent. This is called defining a variable. All of the steps involved in writing algebraic expressions are shown below. So first we look at the words. Describe the situation. Then we find a variable. Define, we have to define a variable by choosing a variable to represent the unknown quantity. X, M, whatever. And then we write the actual expression. Translate your verbal model, your words, into algebraic expression, into numbers. So let's put that into practice. Translate each phrase into algebraic expression. Three dollars more than the cost of a sandwich. Three dollars, I have three dollars, and I write it here, three dollars more than the cost of a sandwich. So I have the, the cost of a sandwich, and I'm gonna represent sandwich with the letter S because that's what sandwich are, plus three. Do you see? Because it's saying that it has three more than the cost of a sandwich. This is the cost of my sandwich plus three. So the sandwich could cost maybe $5. The sandwich could cost, yeah, let's just say the co sandwich costs $5, and I'm going to add 3 to it. And you can see that that's what's been done here. $3 more than the cost of a sandwich. They take the variable. They, they, let, they choose C to represent sandwich. I chose S, but they chose C. And then they write 3 plus C. I wrote plus 3 as well, but I wrote it the other way around. It's still going to give you the same sum. Letter B. Mary had two dollars and made six an hour babysitting. Mary had two dollars and made six dollars an hour babysitting. We don't know how many hours she babysat. So for every hour, we know she's gonna make six dollars. So it could be, the six is gonna be multiplied by the number of hours. So here's the words, two more than six dollars per hour. We know we already have the two, right? She already had two dollars. We're going to let n represent the number of hours. And this is what it would look like. She already has the 2, 
plus the six dollars she makes every hour so that the six has to be multiplied by the number of hours now let's let's pretend that two that she only worked three hours it would look like this two plus six times three because each hour she made six dollars and here's each hours so then two plus 18 how much does she have in total she has twenty dollars now after working three hours remember she started with two dollars already okay if you think you got it go ahead and try one a and one b on your own and then we'll check pause the video now and do these two pause now one a two miles less then the athlete ran. We don't know how much the athlete ran, so we're going to need a variable. I'm going to go ahead and use A for athlete. So we know that's how much the athlete ran, but we are saying two miles less. So we subtract two. Okay? Next question. We have five points more. So we know that we have to add five. Then the point scored by field goals in each field goal is worth three points. So we know we don't know how many field goals. So we have to let a variable represent that. But we know that we have five points more. So I'm going to start with my five points. And they're saying more added to the number of field goals. And each field goal is three points. But we don't know how many field goals there were. So I'm going to let n represent the number of field goals. If it's one field goal, so it's three times one, only three points. If it's two field goals, it's three times two, that's six points, plus the five points that we already have, the five more points. Okay, as a key concept, let's, um, let's copy this down, okay? Subtraction property of equality. If two quantities are equal, then one quantity can be replaced by the other. Symbols. For all numbers A and B, if A equals B, then A may be replaced by B because they equal the same, so they can be interchangeable. Okay, so now let's work with evaluating algebraic expressions. And let's read. To evaluate an algebraic expression, replace the variables with known values and then use the order of operations. When you replace a variable with a number, you are using the substitution property of equality. So here we go. Example two, they're telling us that um, evaluate, so solve for d plus five minus f. But we don't know what d and f are. They tell us here, d is 16 and f is 18. So here we have d plus five minus f, what they asked us to do, to do. We replace those variables, remember d is 16 and f is 18, and then we solve with order of operation. This is addition and subtraction, so we simply do it left to right. 16 plus 5 is 21, minus 18 is 3. So, now that we are at this point, you can pause the video and try these two on your own. Pause now. Okay, so for question 2a, we have 6 minus e. You can see it there. Plus f. 6 minus e plus f. So we have two variables, e and f. What is e? E is 3 and F is 9. So now let's replace the variables. Okay, I will go now and write 6 minus E, which is 3, plus F, which is 9. And now I just have simply subtraction in addition, so I can work left to right. 6 minus 3 is 3, plus 9. And that equals 3 plus 9 is simply 12. And that's our answer. 2b, 7k plus h, 7k, remember when we have a number next to a variable, the operation is multiplication, so it's 7 times k. If k equals 4 and h equals 10, so now let's replace our variables, okay? I can write my 7 again, and I'm going to replace my k with 4, put it in parentheses, 4 plus h is 10, right? I will now use order of operation. First is multiplication, then addition. Don't forget that in order of operation, we have PEMDAS. That's the order that we do our operations in. We always do parentheses first, or brackets, then exponents, and then multiplication and division can be interchanged depending on which one comes first. If division comes first, from left to right, we do division first. But in this case, we have multiplication. 
multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction can be interchanged as well. So we have multiplication, which is right here. And that's before addition, right there. So multiplication is first. And 7 times 4 is 28 plus 10, right? I keep forgetting to put my equal signs. And my answer is 28 plus 10 is 38. And there you have it. For example 3, please take a look at the different operations that we have to do. Notice that we have a number or a coefficient and a variable, right? And you know that between these two um, is multiplication plus another multiplication, 2 times t, right? We are being given the values of each one. We are told that um, r is 1, s is 5, and t is 8. So we just replace the variable. s is 5, there it is. And t is 8, there it is. So 6 times 5 is 30, and 2 times 8 is 16. And then we add and we get 46, okay? Over here, we have st, so we're replacing two variables. 5 and 8. You see it? 5 times 8. And we're dividing it by 20. So first we multiply. 5 times 8 is 40, and divided by 20 is 2. Okay, if you're feeling confident with this skill, go ahead and pause the video and try 3a, b, and c. Pause now. Okay, question 3a. We have um, 3a plus 2c. a is 4 and c is 12. So we go and we replace the variables with 3, we set a is times 4, right? Plus 2, and c is, we set c is 12. There it is, 2 times 12, right? Now we solve. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 times 12 is 24. Notice that I did my multiplications first. Here's multiplication, and here's multiplication, and I'm saving the addition for last because it's the order of operation. And now I have 12 plus 36. E, I'm sorry, <laughs> 12 plus 24 is 36. 3b. Okay, let's replace the variables first. Well, we have a is 4 and b is 8. So it's 4 times 8 over 16, All right? 4 times 8 is 32 over 16. And now we have a division problem. 32 divided by 16 is just simply 2. Now we have C. Okay, let's remember the values that we have where C equals 12. So I'm going to replace 12 there. Plus parentheses 5 times B. What? B again? 8. There it is. Minus 2. What's A? A is 4. There we go. So I've just replaced my variables. Now, PEMDAS says we have to do parentheses first. So I have some parentheses here to do. Oh, I forgot to do the other parentheses. There we go. Okay. Um, we have some parentheses there. Okay. And inside the parentheses, we have multiplication. So we must do the multiplication first. Right? So our next line will look like this. 12 plus parentheses. 5 times 8 is 40. Minus 2 times 4 is 8. And then we have 12 plus, I still have to solve the parentheses. What is 40 minus 8? 32. And now I can just simply add, I'll go over here, because I'm running out of space. And now I can simply add my 12 plus 32. 12 plus 32 equals 44. There you have it. And now let's bring it all together. Now we're going to use vocabulary or not vocabulary but the written um, word and convert it into a, an expression with numbers so a company rents a houseboat for two hundred dollars plus an extra thirty dollars per day so you your initial uh, fee is two hundred dollars plus thirty dollars for each day we don't know the number of days so maybe we can do thirty times D because each day will be thirty plus the two hundred so what does it look we say $200 rental fee plus $30 per day. We let D represent the number of days. And an expression is 200 plus 30D. So you see that we have $30 per day plus the 200. Okay, now that we've seen that, let's try number four. At a garage sale, each DVD was marked at $5. 
and each CD was marked at three dollars. Okay, so that's our important information. We have five dollars and three dollars. Okay. Write an expression to find the total cost to buy some DVDs and some CDs. Notice they're saying some. They're not telling us how many. Then find the cost of buying four DVDs and seven CDs. So first we're going to do five dollars, right, uh, for some. Uh, some can just be, we'll just make it N, right, five dollars. And um, three dollars for some. That other sum, which is uh, $3 for um, CDs, can be C, right? That would be the total cost, right? Now, we're being told that it's four DVDs, so N is four, right, the DVDs, and C will be seven. Now we can just replace it. So now I have five, replace it with four, right, because it's four DVDs at $5 plus um, three CDs at seven dollars, right? Sorry, I meant to say seven CDs at three dollars. Okay, and now we solve by using order of operation. Remember multiplication first, and both, the, both of these multiplication, and then we add it. So five times four, five times four is 20, so that's how much I'm going to pay for my DVDs, plus three times seven is 21, that's how much I'm paying for my CDs. And when I add it all up, I get 41. Therefore, the cost is $41. Okay, and here is our guided practice. Okay, for our guided practice, this is how we will start class next class. Um, if you don't understand it, uh, please go back to the example. So have a read through, make sure that you feel comfortable and you understand what we're going to be doing when we start the next class. See you then, everyone.